taking a boring and outdated countertop and turning it into something absolutely fabulous. And I'm sticking to my budget because this one was done using paint stir sticks. Huge shout out to the TikTok account, The Modern Home Place, for the inspiration. The old countertop in my camper was in pretty rough shape, so I decided to start from scratch. I went to Home Depot and got a piece of three quarter inch red oak plywood. And because of all the damage, they gave it to me for 70% off. So this $67 piece of wood cost me 20 bucks. Obviously your costs are gonna vary depending on what kind of wood you get. I'm using the old countertop as a template, so I needed to take off all the old trim. And then I simply traced my old countertop and cut along the lines. Before doing any more work, I went ahead and took my rough cut countertop into the camper to make sure it was a good fit. Then using the old countertop, I traced out where my sink and stove will go. You can see the worst of the damage is actually gonna get cut out anyway. Next up, it was time for stir sticks. I bought these from Home Depot as well. They're a dollar a pack and I bought 16 of them. You just wanna make sure they have a pretty wood grain and that they're not too thin. The look of the stir sticks is way more important than the look of the plywood. Then I drew a quick line down the center of my plywood. I wanted this measured and perfectly centered. That way I had a little bit of a guide on where I can place my stir sticks. You want your stir sticks to be perfectly straight. You don't want a handle on them, so I'm gonna cut those off. And instead of measuring, I just use the edge of my saw as a guide. Then I went ahead and placed a handful of the cut stir sticks so I could get an idea of how they would look. I went with a herringbone pattern, but honestly, you could do all sorts of different patterns. It just depends on the look you're going for. Once I knew it was going in the right direction, I started to glue things down. When doing the pieces on the edge, you have two options. You can either cut them ahead of time or you can place them as a full stir stick and then cut them afterward. If you tend to mismeasure or if you don't have the right tools, that'll influence your decision. To hold everything down while the glue was drying, I used pretty much anything I could find that was heavy and then conventional clamps on the edges. Now I tried to conserve stir sticks by not gluing them into the places that were gonna be cut out for the sink and the stove. Honestly, I think this is a horrible move. I should have spent the extra couple of bucks and just done the entire surface because I think it would have looked a lot better and saved me so much stress. Instead, I gave myself a few extra hours of work trying to fit everything together like a puzzle. And then honestly, I had to use stir sticks anyway to just dry fit them so that I could figure out where the edge pieces needed to go anyway. Once everything was placed and the glue had dried, I used a straight edge to mark my line for the edge of my countertop which I could use as a guideline for my circular saw so that I could cut all the excess pieces of the stir sticks off and have a nice clean edge. If you opted to measure and cut your stir sticks before you glued them down, obviously you don't have to do this step. So it just depends if you have a circular saw or a table saw, what options you're gonna go with. Honestly, I started by measuring and cutting ahead of time, but my cuts were never perfect and my measurements were always a little bit off. So I decided to switch over and just cut everything at the end and it made it a lot easier. Once my edges were taken care of, I used my drill to put a hole in the corners of where my sink and my stove will go. That way I had a starting place for my jigsaw. Now I'm pretty new to a jigsaw, so I was really nervous at this point, but it's actually a pretty easy tool to use. And if you're doing an overmount sink, you don't have to be super precise anyway, because nobody's going to see it. Um, your cuts will just be hidden by the lip of your sink. One thing to note, if you're installing a new sink and you're using the paper template that comes with it so that you know how big of a hole to cut, be sure to double check those measurements. I bought a sink from Ikea and had I followed the template exactly, the sink would have fallen straight through the countertop. So I had to make a much smaller hole than what it called for. Now, once your edges are cut and your appliance and sink holes are cut, it's time to start filling all those little gaps in between the stir sticks. I opted for this dap plastic wood wood filler and I actually watered it down so that it could soak into the little crevices easier but you can totally use whatever you like, what you prefer. Just be a little cautious if you're planning to stain your countertop afterward. A lot of wood fillers say that they're stainable and I disagree. Now you can see here that I actually used my fingertip to kind of push all the wood filler into the cracks and crevices, which worked really well and honestly gave me a little bit more precision, but you'll see later in the video that I use a rubber scraper and that works pretty well too. This step is super important to give you a really professional look. If you just left it as is, it would be much more obvious that these are stir sticks. Once you add all the wood filler and sand it down, it gives it like a more smooth finish that just looks more professional. Now it should be noted that I did this step quite a few times. I filled the holes at the beginning and then as I sanded, new spots popped open and I would refill those as needed. Now for sanding, I use my random orbital sander. I love this one. It's one of my favorite tools I have. I started out with really rough grit. I think I actually started with 80 and then I gradually worked my way up to 220. I got about halfway through and I started to panic. So I actually brought the countertop back to the camper just to double check that everything lined up one more time. This time I brought my actual sink and made sure that everything lined up with the plumbing pretty well and that I was good to go. And then it was back to wood filler. I filled everything again, sanded it again, repeat, repeat, repeat. I basically wanted a super smooth surface with absolutely no seams. 
You may have also noticed in that last clip that I had a trim on the edge of the countertop. I simply used the cut stir sticks and I glued them and nailed them into place. And since they're longer than my plywood, it actually gives the effect of having a thicker countertop without all the weight. Now, once I was happy with my wood filler and the sanding, it was time to figure out my finish. I gathered together all the potentials and actually applied them to the piece that I had cut out for the sink so that I could see how they would look on the actual sticks. The initial winner was to stain it using a Wiesel glaze in the color black walnut. I think this turned out beautiful and I decided to go ahead and do the whole countertop in this, but then halfway through I changed my mind because it had a really great farmhouse vibe, but that didn't really fit the modern aesthetic of my camper. So I sanded it all back down again, totally wasted a ton of time, but I got it back to looking beautiful and I was ready to go. This time around, I decided to do a white wash. I used Wiesel's chalk paint in the color Snow Owl. It's just a really bright white. Put some in a mason jar, added a little water, and shook it around. I actually absolutely loved the raw look of these sanded down paint stir sticks, but as soon as I varnished them, they would get darker. It's just the nature of wood. When you add a clear coat to them, they're gonna darken, and these are gonna darken a little more yellow. My camper has a very bold white, black, and gold look to it. Yellow does not fit into the mix, so I knew that I needed to actually lighten these up before I varnished them. In terms of application, I just used a Klingon S50, my favorite paintbrush in all the lands, and I applied it and then wiped the paint back off with a paper towel. Your application technique is gonna vary depending on what you're using, but since I was using a whitewash, I didn't have to follow the grain of the wood because I was wiping it back off. It's essentially just soaking into the grain and then all the excess is being removed. So you're not actually getting any paint lines. It's a super simple process and it's honestly pretty hard to mess this up. Depending on the look you're going for, you're going to vary how many layers of whitewash you do or how much water you add to your paint. I wanted to brighten up the wood and have more of a white base, but I still wanted my wood grain to show. So I did a couple different layers of whitewash, wiping back the excess in between. And then once I let it fully dry, I used a simple sanding sponge to just kind of remove a little bit more so that the wood grain would pop. Once I was happy with the finish, I grabbed a tiny little artist brush and some white paint and I went over any of the little areas that didn't quite take to the whitewash and I also painted over all the little nails just to kind of let them blend in a little bit more. I just wanted to make sure that everything kind of seamlessly blended together. None of this was supposed to look really perfect or manufactured, but I didn't want the nails to stand out. Next, it was time to seal. I went with Wiesel's matte varnish because it has no amber resins, it'll never yellow, and once it's cured, it's a waterproof finish. Just remember that mattifying agents sink to the bottom, so you wanna stir, 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 so that your finish is nice and even. For application, I chose to go with a magic eraser. Yeah, the cleaning tool magic eraser. Just cut a piece of it off so you've got a nice little rectangle, and then I dip the most even end into my varnish and apply in long, even strokes. Now doing this instead of a typical paintbrush, you're gonna avoid any brush marks, which is really important if you want a nice smooth finish. And unlike a typical sponge application, this actually suctions to the surface so you don't get any of those air bubbles. I actually saw this idea on TikTok. She was using it to apply stain. And now that I've tried it with varnish, I don't think I'll ever go back. And don't spend a ton of money on the brand names. Just go on Amazon and look up melamine sponges. You can get a ton of them in bulk for really, really cheap. I have a link down below for that as well. Now here I wanted to show you another technique for the varnish. I dabbed on some of it and then I'm using the sponge to basically follow the grain of the stir sticks. I did both techniques and I actually don't think one is better than the other on this particular project. So just try them both out, see what you feel more comfortable doing. Now allow proper dry time in between and then I did four coats of varnish for a super waterproof finish. Once that was completely dry, and I mean like fully, fully dry, I flipped it over and I slapped on some varnish on the underside. This part, I just used a cheap old brush because it was kind of rough plywood. If you remember from the beginning of the video, there's a lot of holes in it. I applied three full coats on the underside, let it dry, and then I brought it back to the camper one more time. I did a quick dry fitting and then measured everything to figure out exactly where I needed my faucet and my soap dispenser to go. And I know it seems like I should have done this ahead of time, but I'm going to be cutting a circle out of this small area and what's going to be left are tiny little pieces of the stir sticks. I was not super confident that those wouldn't come flying off while I was drilling through this. So I wanted to completely varnish everything and seal it all in before I cut the holes. Then I cut the holes out and I'm not showing this because I used the wrong tool. So I highly recommend you use a hole saw and do it right. Then it was time for install. And one more thing I should mention is that you need to fully varnish all of your raw edges. So the holes that you cut for your faucet and soap dispenser, the holes for the sink and the stove, those all need to be completely varnished 
That way they stay waterproof. If you have any questions about this entire project, please comment below. I also have a list down there of all the products used. And if you are curious about any of my other projects on this camper renovation, be sure to follow my account or check out my website, thecopperelm.com.